Okay, so adjust this table a little bit more. Great. <laughs> okay, so I'm glad you guys are all here. Um, trying a new camera angle today, so I hope this works. So um, we're gonna do a 30 minute get up and move yoga class. And in general with yoga, uh, if something doesn't feel right, remember that you can skip it. I'll try to offer modifications. You can always do something else. So just start um, with your feet close together, maybe towards the middle of your mat. Take a moment, bring the weight into your toes. Maybe bring the weight into your heels. Maybe you rock side to side. Sometimes we're, when we're like anticipating something that hasn't happened yet, we'll start to lean forward. Or when we're thinking about the past, we'll kind of lean back. Or if we're thinking about something not pertaining to the present moment, we'll kind of lean side to side. So for now, just start to evenly distribute your body weight on both feet and stand up nice and tall. Draw your attention to the center line of your body. Feel your feet firmly rooted in the floor and let the floor hold you up. Let this be a symbolic gesture that you're starting to arrive in the present moment. Take a slow inhale through your nose and a slow exhale through your nose. As you inhale, feel your chest rise. As you exhale, soften through your shoulders and chest. Inhale through your nose, standing up tall. Exhale through your nose, rooting down through the floor. We'll start by stretching the neck. So as you inhale, stretch up. And as you exhale, slowly tilt your head to the right. So right ear towards right shoulder, stretching the left side neck. Now right away, it's worth noting that I'm not mirroring you. So it might look like I'm moving my head to the left when in fact I'm moving my head to the right. You are welcome to follow my words or um, my body motions either way. Just know that in general, I will do the right side first. As you're ready, slowly roll your head down. So this time, chin to chest, gentle compression to the throat, gentle stretch to the neck, but try not to lean forward. So roll your shoulders down, lift your chest up, press your heels down, breathe. Good. Now roll your left ear to left shoulder, stretching the right side neck. And right away, notice if this side feels different from the other. It does for me. Um, we are not symmetrical, so yoga will help us kind of address incongruencies or tightness in the body. Um, but yoga also just helps us acknowledge that like maybe one shoulder will always be a little bit tighter than the other, and that's okay. Roll your head back down, chin to chest. This time roll your head back up, looking forward. And now look up towards the ceiling, maybe tilting your nose or even your chin up. So a gentle stretch through the throat and compression to the neck. Breathe. Good, carefully come back looking forward. And now we're gonna twist our neck. So inhale, stretch up. Exhale, look over your right shoulder. Just the neck at this point in class. Try to keep the shoulders and the hips facing the front of your mat. So it's just the neck that's moving. Inhale, stretch up. Exhale, look over your right shoulder. Good, slowly, carefully come back to center, looking forward and we'll do the other side. Inhale, stretch up. Exhale, look over your left shoulder and twist. Again, just noticing how this side might feel the same or it might feel different. We are not butterflies, perfectly imperfect. It's all good. Root down through both heels, inhale, stretch up. Exhale, look over your left shoulder, twist. Good, slowly, carefully come back to center. Next, we'll get the arms and the whole spine involved and we'll also do a little bit of a wrist stretch. So interlace your fingers and then push your palms out. Drop your shoulders down for a second and just like enjoy the sensation of the wrist and knuckle stretch. From here, you're gonna lift your arms up and at first that might look like this. Eventually, arms back with your ears. Drop your shoulders, lift your chin. Root down through your heels, stretch up towards the ceiling and slowly bend to the right as you push your hips to the left. So just a gentle stretch to the left side of the body. Gentle compression to the right side of the body. Try and keep your armpits and your hips facing the front of your mat. So notice if you're twisting and bring the right shoulder forward a little bit. Breathe. 
Good, carefully come back up to center, press down your heels, stretch up through your chest and slowly bend to the left as you push your hips to the right. Don't collapse, keep your chin and chest lifted, relax your shoulders, so shoulders down and chin up. Contract your thighs and your glutes a little bit to create a strong foundation in the lower body. Breathe. Beautiful. Slowly come back to center. Now we'll go backwards. Keep your eyes open and slowly tilt your head back. Squeeze your butt to take pressure off of your lower back. Push your palms up, lift your chest, and then bring your arms back a little bit. So you should feel a stretch through the chest, maybe even the armpits and stomach, and gentle compression through the spine. Good, slowly, carefully come back up, looking forward. And next we're gonna fold forward. So from the side, stretch up, stomach in, and then bend your knees generously and carefully go down. If you have a history of slip discs, you're welcome to keep your hands on your thighs. Eventually you can fold forward. Maybe try catching opposite uh, elbows with opposite hands. Relax your head completely and then just gently sway side to side. For a deeper hamstring stretch, bring the weight forward into your toes and lift your hips up, but knees can stay bent. Notice if you know, you're know you looking towards your pedicure or forward and just drop your head, look for the wall behind you as you sway right and left. So the spine moves in six directions, right, left, backward, forward, and twisting to each side. And we do all of those multiple times, right? So we're gonna do a spine twist here. Bend your knees a little bit more and see if you can put your hands on the floor. Take a wider step. So I'm gonna take a three to four foot step here. Place your left hand equidistance between your feet. So your hand can be in front of your feet, but it's equal distance between left and right foot, kind of in the center line of your body. So left hand firmly planted in the center and then reach your right arm up and look up. If having your hand on the floor is too much, you're welcome to come up and place your hand on your um, right thigh, otherwise hand on the floor for a nice spine twist. Left shoulder forward, right shoulder back. Notice if all the weight is shifting to one side, bring your left hip to the left and then left shoulder forward. So it's the spine twisting rather than the hips moving. Good, slowly, carefully lower your right hand down to the floor this time. Place your right hand in the center line of your mat and lift your left arm up, looking up. So for this side, bring right hip to right and then right shoulder forward, left shoulder back. Bring a little bit weight forward, lift the hips up. Breathe. Good, and slowly lower your left hand down. Walk your feet back closer together Bend your knees a little bit more, generous bend in the knees, and slowly roll back up. Take your time. Good. Okay. Do a couple shoulder rolls forward, a couple shoulder rolls back. Good. And then we're actually going to come down onto the floor for a cat cow. So I'm going to show you from the side. You're going to start in a tabletop position. Um, push down through all of your knuckles. So notice if the weight's in your uh, like the heels of your hands really root down through all four corners of your hands. We're going to start with cat pose. So as you exhale, pull your belly in, drop your head down, press your hips forward, round your spine. This is cat pose, kind of rounding your spine up to the ceiling like an angry Halloween cat. As you inhale, cow pose, drop your belly down like a cow's stomach, a cow's udders, lift your chin up, stick your butt out, squeeze shoulders together for a back bend, cow pose. Exhale, tuck your tailbone under, pull your abdomen in, spread your shoulders wide, look towards your hips. Cow pose, drop your stomach down, lift your chin, squeeze shoulders together, stick your butt up, look up and breathe. One more time, cow pose, tuck your hips forward, spread your shoulders wide, rounding the spine, creating space between every vertebrae. Good. And then cow pose, dropping the stomach down, squeezing the shoulders together, opening through the heart and the throat. Come back to a neutral tabletop position, and we're going to do a couple different variations for wrist stretch. So I'll show you this way. Bring your fingers out to the side this time. So wrists in and fingers out, and then we're going to do three capped cows at your own pace. If you need to bend the elbows, that's fine. Or if you need to bring a little bit more weight back into your legs, that's fine but we're just working through some wrist and knuckle tightness as we move our spine. Okay, we're 
when you're ready, coming back into a neutral position. This is where it starts to get fun. This time, bring your fingers towards your knees, so wrists towards the front of your mat, fingers towards the back of your mat, and this you should really feel in your wrists, or at least I do. And again, if you need to bend the elbows, that's fine. We'll do three cat cows, rounding the spine, bending the spine. Opening the shoulders, squeezing the shoulders. Pressing your hips forward, lifting the hips up. When you're ready, come back to center. And last one, this is the super fun one. You're gonna rotate your palms so knuckles face the floor, palms face the ceiling, wrists towards the front of your mat, fingers towards the back of your mat. So your palms facing up and you can bend your elbows out if that helps take pressure off of your wrists. And then again, some cat cows. So, you know, especially like in the modern age when we're on our phones and our computers so much, I think wrist flexibility is really important and often overlooked. And one of, this is one of those exercises, the first couple times I did it, um, I was like suffering a lot, but if you just do it a couple times um, a week, your wrists start to open up. For your last cat cow, see if you can make fists, like ball up your fingers. Eventually you'll be able to make full fists. Again, this is something where if you just do it consistently, it gets easier. And take one more cat cow, squeezing the palms together. Okay, good. As you're ready, come back to a neutral position. Slowly come back onto your feet and then do whatever feels good with your wrists. Nice. Okay. So we worked out the wrists. Now we're going to work out the toes and the ankles. So for this little toe stretch, you're going to come forward a little bit, tuck your toes under, and then try to sit back on your heels. And at first that might look like this, eventually sitting back on the heels. You're welcome to have your knees wide apart. You can have your hands at heart center. You can also do some fun stuff where you like grab a shoulder, Grab another shoulder, give yourself a hug. So this one also makes my toes burn, um, but it's so good for toe flexibility, ankle flexibility, uh, stuff that we often leave out. Take a slow inhale. Take a slow exhale. Good, come forward. You're gonna tap out your feet. We're all going to come into a child's pose. So sink your hips down and reach your arms forward. I'm going to check your position. <laughs> Sorry, Heidi. <laughs> when cats attack, the yoga from home story. I know it well. <laughs> so sink your hips down, reach your arms forward for a child's pose. If having your arms forward is too much, you can always have your arms down by your sides. Otherwise, reach your arms forward, sink your hips down. Let's take three breaths here. Slow inhale, slow exhale. As you inhale, feel your rib cage expand. As you exhale, sink your hips down. Inhale, reach your arms forward. Exhale, lengthen your spine. Great. From here, put your hands on the floor. Come up into tabletop, okay? You're going to tuck your toes under and lift your hips up for down dog. Now, to know how wide your down dog is, come forward into plank, and you should have a plank length between your feet and your hands. From here, lift your hips up again, down dog. Bend one knee, straighten the other. You want to use what's called ujjayi breathing. So gentle constriction to the throat as you inhale and exhale helps to create body heat. Try to uh, lift your hips up, press your thighs back, and bring the heels down to the floor. Breathe. On your next inhale, look forward and fold forward back into plank. And if plank is too much, please know that you can always come into your knees in tabletop. Feel your core engage. 
We're gonna do what's called a vinyasa or a chatter up now. So you're gonna come forward two more inches, keep your core engaged, hug your elbows in, and lower down to low plank, a 90 degree angle. As you inhale, come up either into a baby cobra with your thighs on the floor and your elbows bent, or an up dog with your thighs off the floor and your arms straight. If your arms are straight but your thighs are on the floor, bend the elbows down, it's safer for the shoulders. Everybody push down through all 28 knuckles. Breathe. Okay, exhale, tuck your toes under, lift your hips up, and we're back into down dog. So that sequence is called like a vinyasa, that chaturanga to up dog to down dog. You can always skip it or modify. Okay, next we're gonna do a warrior sequence. So you're looking towards your feet as you inhale, Lift your right leg up into three-legged dog. As you exhale, lean forward and plant your right foot in between your hands for a runner's lunge. Look forward, hold here. Try to press your left hip forward to square off the hips. Good, take an inhale and come up. Spiral your left foot out, so left heel on the floor into warrior one, and then press the left hip forward. So you wanna even out your hips. So left hip forward, if you're facing the front of your mat, you want to keep your hips facing the front of your mat. Take an inhale, take an exhale. Keep showing you from the side. You're going to go into warrior two. So reach your arms apart and let your hips open. Warrior two, for an extra wrist stretch if you want it, you can point your fingers up to the ceiling and push your palms apart like you're pushing apart the sides of your walls. Breathe. Reversing the warrior, straighten your right leg, just do a micro bend in that knee, and then place your left hand towards left thigh, right arm up, looking up overhead. Breathe. Nice stretch on the right side body. Good, bend your right knee again, coming back into warrior two. This time place right forearm on right thigh, lift your left arm up, stretching up. Option to look forward or look up towards the ceiling, this time stretching the left side body. Breathe. Good. From here, rotate the arms back out to parallel. Lift your left heel off the floor. Bring your left toes in, push your left hip forward. Reach your arms up overhead. Okay, and we're gonna do a balance challenge here, warrior three, shift your weight into your right foot, lift your left foot off the floor, I have to move because otherwise I'll turn run into my TV and carefully fold forward. So in Bikram, this would be like a balancing stick. Try to drop your left hip down. Hold here. Beautiful. Okay, return your left foot to the floor. Left heel down. Let's put both hands on the floor. Lift the right heel back up into three-legged dog. Good. Right foot back down. And let's fold forward, rolling forward into your high plank or tabletop, taking a vinyasa chaturanga, hugging the elbows into a 90 degree angle. Inhale, come up into your baby cobra or up dog. Exhale, tuck your toes under, lift your hips up, down dog. Breathing here. Good, and let's do the other side. Look towards your feet. Inhale, lift your left leg up, three-legged dog. Exhale, bring your left foot forward, foot between the hands. Hold here, lift your chin away from your chest. Square off your hips, right hip forward. On your next inhale, coming up into warrior one, lifting up, try to get that back heel on the floor, and then press your right hip forward. So hips are even. Holding your shoulders down, chin up. If this is too much for the arms, you can always have your hands on your hips or at heart center. Good, warrior two, reach your arms out, bend your knee, turn your right toes out, sit down. Showing you from the side. Good, you can push your palms apart, feel your chest opening, drop your shoulders, maybe sitting down a little lower. We're gonna reverse the warrior, straighten that left leg, Put your right hand towards right thigh, lift your left arm up, looking up. Good, bend that left knee again, rotate the arms back to parallel, placing left forearm on left thigh, right arm up, looking up, stretch. OK, 
Okay, good. Rotate your arms back out. Shift your weight into your left foot. Turn your right toes in. Lift, press your right hip forward. Lift your arms overhead. We're going to try and do warrior three. Shifting your weight into your left leg. Lift the right foot up and then see if you can fold forward. Breathing here for three breaths. You can point your toes or flex your toes. Whatever feels good for you. Okay, good. Bring that right foot back down. Good. Okay, put your hands on the floor in front of you. Lift your left foot back up in the three-legged dog. Left foot back down and let's do the vinyasa again. Pulled forward, rolled forward, look over. Look forward, I should say. Hug your elbows in, lowering down, chaturanga. Inhale, come up into your up dog or baby cobra. Holding here, open the chest. Exhale, tuck your toes under. Lift your hips up, down dog. Bend one knee, straighten the other. Try to press your heels down. Squeeze your thighs up, lift your hips up. Root down through all 28 knuckles, especially the space between your index finger and thumb. Push down there. Take a breath. Okay, this time, look between your hands, lift your heels. You can step forward or play around with popping forward, hands between the feet, looking forward. Exhale, bend your knees, drop your head. Inhale, reach your eyes, come up, arms of your ears, looking up overhead. Exhale, hands back down at heart center. Good for you. So we just did some uh, vinyasa variations of warrior pose. It's so nice. We're going to make our way onto the floor for the rest of class. Good. So start in the crisscross applesauce position. If crisscross applesauce doesn't work for you, you can have your legs straight out in front of you or maybe some variation of crisscross applesauce. Okay, we're gonna do a spine twist. Place your right hand close behind you at the base of your spine. As you inhale, lift your left arm up overhead, stretching up. As you exhale, place your left hand on right knee. Inhale, stretch up. Exhale, look over your right shoulder and twist. You can keep your right hand behind you or play around with trying to catch your left thigh with your right hand for a half bind. Inhale, stretch up. Exhale, look over your right shoulder, twist. Inhale, stretch up. Exhale, look over your right shoulder twist. Good. If you have your hand in a bind, carefully remove that hand, put your right hand back on the floor, and then slowly uncurl, take your time. Let's do the other side. Place your left hand close behind you. Inhale, reach your right arm up, nice stretch. Exhale, place right hand on left knee. Inhale, stretch up. Exhale, look over left shoulder, and twist. Good. You can keep your left hand behind you or try to catch your right thigh with your left hand. Notice if you're rolling way to the left, evenly distribute your body weight on both sit bones. Inhale, stretch up, abdomen in. Exhale, look over your left shoulder, twist, twist, twist. If you have your hand in a bind, remove that bind, placing your left hand on the floor, and then slowly, carefully unwind, return to center. Bring both legs out for a nice straddle pose. You want to feel a gentle inner thigh stretch. To feel more of a stretch, you can open your legs wider, or if it's too intense, you can bring your feet closer together. From here, put your hands on the floor, stick your butt out a little bit, and carefully fold forward. Try to keep a flat back. Maybe hands on the floor, maybe forearms on the floor, maybe chest on the floor. Take three breaths wherever you are. Good. Carefully walk yourself back up. And in a way that feels good for you, turn around, lie down on your back for Savasana. Head towards the front of your mat, feet towards the back of your mat. Take a moment here. Feel your whole body lying onto the floor and let the floor hold you up. Nice flat surface here, spine lengthening. Everything stretching out. Slow inhale. Slow exhale. Inhale, exhale. Let's take a happy baby. So bend your knees up, lift your feet off the floor. 
Open your feet wide, generous bend in the knees, and see if you can catch the outsides of your feet with your hands. So I like to have my elbows on the insides of my knees and my feet on the outsides of my knees. From here, we're just gonna rock back and forth. Nice way to kind of stretch out the back. And if you'd like, as you roll to the left, you can try straightening your left leg. And as you roll to the right, you can try straightening your right leg. So happy baby. really is amazing to me like whenever I see babies or you know infants or toddlers like the amount of flexibility in yoga <laughs> that they naturally do I'm like what <laughs> how do you have your foot behind your head I want to do that okay as you're ready stop rocking back side to side come back to the center line of your body release the grip on your feet Try to bring your knees feet together and then give yourself a big squeeze. So you can place hands on knees or shins. You can interlace fingers, grab forearms, maybe even try to catch opposite elbows. And again, you can roll back and forth here a couple of times, just rolling out the back. And then come back to the center line of the body. Try to relax your head onto the floor. Give yourself a big hug, squeezing tight. Squeeze a little harder. Good, and release. Slowly returning back into your savasana. Arms and legs down. Take an inhale. Take an exhale. Keep your left leg straight. Bend your right leg up. Place your, um, grab your right shin knee area with your right hand and try to bring the right knee towards the right armpit for a moment. Nice little hip stretch. Good. Now place your left hand on your right knee, bring your right arm out to the side and roll left, or pardon me, right knee towards left side of the room for a spine twist. So try to keep two shoulders on the floor, but right hip will stack on top of left hip. You can have your head on the floor looking up towards the ceiling or for a neck stretch, look to the right side of the room, rolling right ear towards floor. Just a nice little spine twist at the end of class. Take an inhale, take an exhale. Good. If you're looking to the right side of the room, roll your head back to center and then slowly reverse out, bringing two hips to the floor, lower the right leg down, and we'll do the other side. Lift your left leg up. Grab your left knee shin area with your left hand. Pull the left knee towards the left armpit. Feel a nice stretch opening through the hips. Good. Place your right hand on your left knee. Bring your left arm out to the side and slowly lift your left hip up, rolling left knee to right side of the room. So left hip stacks on top of right hip, but two shoulders on the floor. You can look up or you can look to the left, rolling the left ear down towards your mat. Take an inhale. As you exhale, try to release any tension in the body. Good. If you're looking to the left, roll your head back to center first, and then slowly, carefully roll back down, left leg down, arms down, legs down, final savasana. You can close your eyes or keep your eyes open. Any final little stretches that feel good for you, please do them. Good. And then we'll just finish with three breaths together. So maybe place one hand over your chest and one hand um, over your stomach. And just notice as you breathe how the body's moving, expanding and contracting, lifting and softening. Take a slow inhale through your nose, drawing your attention to the center line of your body. Slow exhale through your nose, feel yourself firmly rooted in the ground. You inhale, feel your chest and abdomen rise. As you exhale, let your abdomen and chest fall, softening down. Inhale, scanning your body for any lingering tension. Exhale, letting it go with the exhale breath. Relax completely, completely relax, breathe. Feel your practice however you'd like, maybe with hands at heart center or just a pat on the back or a high five or fist bump. You're welcome to stay in final savasana as long as you'd like. 
Otherwise, you can make your way up and back into your day as you are ready. Thanks for joining.